Hey guys, I'm Marcel and you're watching The Pulse. Today I'm going to talk about another channel, the Dr. Brad Stanfield channel. Dr. Brad is one of the people that inspired me to try NMN. He later stopped taking NMN, which I've documented in a couple other videos. But I still watch Dr. Brad, I still learn from Dr. Brad, and have a lot of respect for Dr. Brad. Um, last week, I think it was, he posted a new video uh, asking for help, asking for advice. Uh, and he posed the possibility of creating his own multi-supplement. Um, of all of the things that he himself takes and that he would combine all of these things into one supplement that people could then buy. And he would take the proceeds and use it for his rapamycin trial, which I'm gonna talk more about in a minute. As many of you may know already, I'm very much against multi-supplements. In other words, taking things combined. Other than like grouped vitamins, something like the magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin K, which multiple studies have shown have a synergistic impact. I think that's different than starting to just add everything that you take, like a laundry list of supplements. And there are a number of reasons why they have to do with dosages, like what's the right dosage for the right person and should that dosage change? And then what happens when new information comes out about a specific dosage uh, or testing? You want to test the purity level or the stability uh, after a certain period of time, shelf life issues, storage issues. Also, intolerances. You might take one of those supplements or even vitamins or minerals may cause some kind of intolerance with some medication that you're taking. So you may have some conflict going on. Um, and also, you can't add them one at a time, so you don't know what any of them are doing. You don't really know what's helping you if you take 10 things at once uh, right out of the gate. Um, you re it's much better, in my view, to take things one at a time or, again, as much as possible. Like that group supplement example, you, know, you may want to take that, and it gives you a good idea what that's doing for three months. And then take something else. You know, my supplement stack has grown steadily uh, over an 18-month period. So every two or three months, I added something new, and I would report on it, and I would always wait a while. I might mention that I tried, to, tried taking something new, but uh, I wouldn't try to gauge any results from that, sometimes for as long as six months. So I'm not a fan of the multi-supplement. Uh, but what about rapamycin? What about his, his trial? Which I, I dug in deeper to this. I've heard him speak about it many times, but I'm glad I dug in deeper because it's a trial that includes rapamycin and exercise. And so participants would be elderly. He's looking at getting 40 participants. Uh, they would all exercise three times a week. They're sending them cycles to do it, so it's very consistent and repeatable. They're also going to do a battery of other tests and blood tests. And then half of that group, 20 individuals, would get rapamycin once a week, and the others would get a placebo, and they would measure this. These human clinical trials are very expensive to conduct, and this specific trial is going to cost about $490,000. And there are a few administrative costs, but most of it's all just hard costs to conduct the trial. There are doctors, hospital visits where the tests are done. Um, then they have to recruit individuals, and they have to find somewhat in the same level of health. Um, so it's, it's really tough because unless you have 20 uh, twins, identical twins, so you get your 40 people from twins, and you give one twin the placebo, one twin rapamycin, there are a lot of variables that can take place. So you actually need pretty significant results to actually draw much of a conclusion because your sample size isn't hundreds or thousands of people. It's, uh, it's 40 people. And a lot of things can skew those results when you're only looking at 40 people. So you can get an idea if that costs a half a million. Now you understand why some trials cost tens of millions and why we don't have more human clinical trials for various, various substances. Now I have some questions about this specific trial and some observations. One observation is he mentioned he's gonna take Pfizer. He's gonna give them Pfizer rapamycin. Well, why isn't Pfizer donating to the trial? They've raised 110,000 and that number doesn't seem to have changed over the last six months, which is a, a significant point. It seems to have stalled. Like his efforts have stalled. And that's why I think he's doubling down and saying, okay, there's got to be another way to raise money. And he, as well as I, talks to various companies at different times, different CEOs. 
And somehow somebody probably came up with the, the suggestion, why don't you make a supplement? We'll manufacture it. You sell it. And we'll take the proceeds and give it to your trial. It, it makes sense on its face. However, even Brad is concerned about the credibility issue. Once you have Dr. Brad's super supplement, you're going to be viewed as a supplement maker, a supplement seller. That may or may not influence or impact your 140,000 subscribers that you have now. But everybody new that comes to the party is going to see you through that lens. You're a supplement seller. You have your name on a supplement. Whether or not it goes to a charity or not is really beside the point at that time because everyone's going to think you're benefiting. And essentially by building a channel up on that basis, you are benefiting. I just think it's a bad idea for the credibility reasons, for the specific multi-supplement reasons that I stated. But that doesn't mean your rapamycin trial idea is bad. And this is where we're going to take a little turn here, maybe a big turn. I'd like to see his rapamycin trial successful. Um, I'm going to donate this year, probably make four payments. He's, he's not in any danger of, of hitting his number anytime soon, but I'm going to support him all year on this. I'm going to donate myself $1,000 this year uh, in four payments, probably of two fifty dollars per quarter, something like that. And then I'm going to keep updating people, and hopefully we'll see this needle start to move. This 110 that he's raised get closer and closer to 490 and then maybe we can get some uh, supplement manufacturers or other companies, vitamin companies, just to donate. And that may sound difficult, but I was reminded or informed, educated, that it's not always that difficult if you have some conviction, if you have a, a purpose for what you're doing. Especially, I think, if he can get some momentum of people, maybe like this channel. I know we're not anywhere near the size of Dr. Brad's channel, but if we can sort of get some, some synergy going, then maybe we can help him hit his goal. And I think we all win from this. Rapamycin, if you didn't know, in early studies has been shown to increase the life of dogs, which have a much shorter lifespan than humans, but longer than mice, by around 25, 26%, which is three years on average. That's a long time to have a dog. Like, if someone said there's a good chance, probably better chance than not so far, that your dog can live three years longer and remain healthy and be stronger, you could just give them this rapamycin once a week. I think a lot of dog owners are just going to say, sign me up. Give my dog the rapamycin. My, my kids love the dog. I love the dog. My wife loves the dog, <laughs> hopefully. If it works for the dog, it might work for you. I mean, 25% longer life is significant. And I think that's why Brad's looking at this. So I'm in. And I'm going to put the link below for those of you that want to donate. I'm going to put it down in this video. And in any video I talk about his trial, I'll put the link down there. It goes to PayPal. It's a donation. I've checked all this stuff. Okay, His charity, his trial is certified in Australia. And they have a certification process, which he did over a year ago. And it's, it's all legit. Like he... He has other videos where he posts where it's all going and what it's all for and how much money they're going to spend on each part of the trial process. So it's, it's very well documented. I believe he's raised $100,000 because it's a good cause. Do not age are the supplements I take. I don't have other companies listed um, because I'm involved with that company in the sense that I take their supplements. Um, they gave me a discount code. And there's a little bit of money that comes back to the channel. I've been offered many multiples of that money uh, 12 times over the past six months. And I've turned it all down uh, because of this credibility issue. I don't want to like be changing. And I'm taking these supplements and my results are predicated on these supplements. This NMN that I take from Do Not Age that's in the description. And so every time you look at me or every time you watch a video or every time you listen to me, you know what I'm taking. It's very easy to replicate it, and this community is replicating it. And he also uh, gets some supplements I know. I don't know which ones he takes. It's a little bit harder for me to decipher. Maybe it's in one of his videos. Forgive me for not seeing that one. But I was reminded of the power that talking about something can have. Um, recently, I was talking with the CEO of a supplement company. And I don't even know, I don't remember, I was so shocked by his, his response to my point. I don't even remember how the point came up, I gotta be honest. But I said, 
I'd really like to help veterans. I think he, he asked me, what would you like to do with your channel? And I said, well, one of the things I'd like to do is try to help veterans with PTSD. Because I had symptoms that were similar to PTSD, chronic fatigue, anxiety, um, health issues, inflammation issues. And I think that NMN helped me so much that I think if veterans would try this, like if we have an 80% results rate, and I think it's even higher, but that's just the people who report I feel better pretty quickly from NMN, two months or less. And so if, if we could do that for veterans with PTSD, I think it, it could be huge. These are guys who are, they can't work, many of them. We're talking about tens of thousands. Some of them are now drug addicted, homeless, just sad situations. Our nation's veterans suffering. And NMN might be, if not a cure, I mean, I, I think it could be. Like it, it cured my anxiety issues, my chronic fatigue issues, cured them. And so maybe we could do something for these veterans. The CEO says to me, I'm in, let's do it. We're looking at ways we can make some donations this year and I'll give a thousand bottles for that cause. A thousand bottles of NMN. I'm, I'm, I go up on their website and I'm not going to divulge who it is yet because um, I'd like to see it be in the delivery point so we could all boast about it. But it's that's a minimum donation of 40,000 right there in, in street value. That's a huge donation to come out of a two minute portion of a phone conversation. And so the power of talking about this is, is palpable. It's real. And so me donating a thousand dollars is just an expression of my support for Brad and his trial. I feel disingenuous to say, Brad, I don't think you should be a supplement seller or manufacturer directly. I think it's one thing to list the things you take. That's what I do. It's what others do. It supports the channel. More importantly, it's transparency. And people know what you're taking, see you take it, they come in. I know for a fact people watch this channel and say, does he look better? Is there more lines? Is there more? Le is there less? Does he have more hair? What, what's his energy like? I know that. And that's that's fair game. But, you know, once you're selling something with your name on it, everyone that's that's going to tune in is going to view you through that lens. And uh, it changes the dynamic of things. But if I say, don't do this great idea you have to raise money, it's not really fair because I'm the more I thought about it, I'm not really helping him. Just 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 being negative. So I decided to turn it on its head and say, no, no, you have the right idea. A trial conducted by the end user community, whether it's a, a YouTube channel, like this is, a, this is the future. These channels, we represent, you think about it, the FDA, in my view, from my vantage point, and it turns out a lot of CEOs agree with me, and at least in the supplement industry, the FDA represents, to a great extent, the pharmaceutical industry. Now, I'm not saying they don't represent public safety. There are many cases where they've represented public safety on record. So I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying if it comes down to drug industry versus supplement industry, first of all, the drug industry gets way more meetings. They have way more forms to fill out and application processes to, to pursue. And the supplement industry is down below. And so where are the supplement takers? Well, they're down below those because there are f at least five different trade groups that represent the supplement industry. And they are writing letters and they actually had a recent meeting with the head of the uh, FDA, which is rare. Some people were questioning if it ever even happened before. That's how much attention they're giving to them. So the main point is, who does the FDA represent? Food and drug administration. They represent mostly, to a great extent, the drug industry. The point is, then there are trade groups that represent the supplement industry. But who represents the supplement takers? And the best I could come up with are the supplement companies to some extent themselves, because if it's in the interest of their customers, it's in their own self-interest as well. And then people like Brad, myself to a lesser extent, other channels. We are beholden to our viewers. If, if you take away the Pulse viewers or Dr. Brad viewers, you have no Dr. Brad, you have no Pulse. So we are inextricably connected to each other, the supplement taking community. And since we do both talk a lot about supplements, that's who our audience is. Why should we support his trial? Because he's one of us. Because he's our 
representative. And that's why I'm going to support him. I don't know if it's going to be a great trial or a bad trial or even if, it, if he's going to raise the money or not. It's not the point. The point is, if I don't support the guy who's representing me and you, then how are we ever going to have representation? How are we ever going to get answers that suit our needs? And 25% life extension is a pretty cool possibility, especially if you're healthy. And that's what the exercise part of that trial includes. So support Brad. I'm supporting Brad. Regardless of the fact I don't agree with the multi-supplement idea, I want it to, to be balanced. I want it to be fair. And I wanted to make this move, this video, a positive one. And hopefully I've done that. And hopefully you guys, as supplement takers, consumers, and hopefully some of you CEOs out there feel inspired to donate. Let me know. You know, let me know so we can sort of measure it, measure the progress. Um, and it could be a dollar. It could be a little bit each quarter and come back and gauge the progress like I'm going to do. Send 10 bucks, five bucks. Send, send something. Let's move the needle. Let's make some progress and hopefully pull Dr. Brad away from the ledge of going into, you know, supplement brand world because I, I don't think he needs to go there and I don't think it's in the best interest of in the long term of, of our community because we, we do need people like Brad. He, whether we always agree with his videos is beside the point. He's serving an important need in our community, and that's what I'm going to support. See you guys soon.